Have you ever seen or met someone who lives a double life? You know, they present themselves as one thing here, but they become a completely different person when they are in a different environment. And I'm talking about the kind of person who's a sales manager during the day, but a gambling addict at night. I'm talking about the functioning alcoholic. They drink all throughout the day, but you couldn't see it by just looking at them because they can still function. They can still work and perform as though they were sober. So many people these days live double lives. And unfortunately, we've even seen this in the church. We've seen it in times when it comes to light that the pastor has been, in fact, living in sin. So I want to tell you a few things. And the first of those being people will be people. Believe me, there is no one without sin. The Bible says in Romans 3 verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. If you put your hope in people, in a pastor, you are going to be disappointed. Only Jesus Christ is perfect. It's only Jesus Christ who can never disappoint you. Now, my second point is that to some degree, we all have to fight against living a double life. There is a battle between who you are in public and who you are in private. God sees the heart. God sees what's done in private. God sees what's done in the darkness. If we claim to be followers of Christ, we cannot be split down the middle. When it comes to faith in Jesus Christ, there is no such thing as a neutral stance. You cannot have one foot in and one foot out when it comes to the things of God. Consider Jesus' words in Matthew 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, here's an exercise for you. Replace the word money with anything. You cannot serve God and your career. You cannot serve God and validation from others. You cannot serve God and your addiction. If we're not completely devoted to God, then we are not truly his followers. If we're not completely devoted to God, then we're living a double life. In some ways, being a half-hearted Christian is even worse than not being one at all. Listen to what the Bible says in Revelation 3, verses 15 and 16. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. If you truly understand the offer that Jesus is laying before you, then you have a choice to make. Give your entire life to him and allow him to transform you. Allow him to renew you and change your heart. Let's make a decision, people of God. Decide not to live a double life anymore. Let's be fully committed to the Lord. Now with that sincere desire to completely sell out to him, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we bow down to you. We want to serve you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we reject this world and its temptations. We reject the devil and all that he has to offer. And Lord, we come to you in prayer today and we declare that we need you. We want you, Lord Jesus. Your word in 1 Samuel 26, verse 23. It says, The Lord rewards everyone for their righteousness and faithfulness. The Lord delivered you into my hands today, but I would not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Help us to live righteous lives. Where you alone, Lord Jesus, have authority over the choices we make. Where you rule our thought life. 
where you are the motivating factor behind all our actions and all our deeds. Lord, help us to live righteous lives where we're set apart. Help us to have a heavenly perspective so that we can live lives that are totally committed, totally dedicated to glorifying the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Master, so that we can fight the good fight of faith and do it without compromising. The Bible in Matthew 6, verse 33 says, But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given to you also. Lord, we put you first. We place you above everything in this world and we choose to serve the kingdom of God over our own personal interests. The kingdom of darkness offers nothing of significance, nothing everlasting. But your kingdom, O Lord, it offers eternal life. It offers everlasting joy and peace. It offers us the privilege of one day being in the presence of the Almighty. In you, Lord Jesus, we are reborn from above. We are spiritually transformed. We are renewed and ready to be used for your glory. And so, Father, I pray that you would help us to continue to strive and fight against sin. Give us the strength to wage war against sin. Help us to fight to live in purity. Keep us, Lord, from a self-righteous and arrogant spirit. Instead, help us to be humble and to realize that without you, we have no power. Without you, we cannot overcome anything. And so, Lord, we need you. Help us to realize, Lord Jesus, that a true righteous way of living is what you describe in Matthew 16, verses 24 and 25. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Lord Jesus, you call us to deny ourselves and set aside selfish interest. You call us to take up our cross meaning that we need to express a willingness to endure whatever may come and to endure it for your sake. God, I pray that you would know our hearts and cleanse us. Know our hearts and make them pure. Know our hearts, dear God, and draw us to you. Thank you, Father, for listening to this prayer. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.